Welcome to London, a city close to my home, a city that's close to my heart. And for one weekend only, this is also home to the Pokemon World Championships. But that's not all, because alongside the Pokemon World Championships is also the largest Pokemon Center in the world. So let me take you with me for a day at the Pokemon Center and Nintendo Switch hunting in London. Now, as you guys know, I love Nintendo and I also really love Pokemon. The only issue is I'm British. The UK doesn't have a Nintendo Center. It doesn't have a permanent Pokemon Center. And our closest Disneyland, which is in Paris, doesn't even have a Nintendo Land. So when I heard that the Pokemon World Championships were being held in the UK this year, I completely lost my mind. As not only does this mean a huge collection of Pokemon fans all in one place, it also means that the largest Pokemon center in the world will be just under an hour away from me. So of course, I had to go. The World Championships were being held in North London at the XL Centre, which also happens to be the home of the nicest tube line in the whole of the city. As this is the Elizabeth line, the newest of the tube lines, and thankfully the only tube line I needed to get to make it to the XL Centre. And from the moment I stepped foot off of the train, the vibes were instantly impeccable now because of how busy this pokemon center was expected to be when you booked online you were actually given a time slot and thankfully i had a little bit of time to wander around before it was time for me to go in now this event as a whole is broken into two parts you have the pokemon center but then you also have the area housing the actual world championships and honestly i regret not getting tickets for this part it looks so cool for some reason i assumed there wouldn't be much going on in there other than the competition but it looks like I was incredibly wrong. It looks jam-packed, filled with different stuff to do. So if you ever go to a World Championships, I highly recommend not just getting tickets for the Pokemon Center, but also just going around there for a day as well. But soon it was time to go and get in the queue. Now I was a little bit concerned going in as we went on the second day of the event and on Twitter we heard rumors that people were waiting up to two hours to get into the Pokemon Center. But thankfully we seemed to have no issues whatsoever so I guess we were pretty lucky. And genuinely the only reason the queue took me 20 plus minutes to go through was because I kept on getting distracted by all the cool stuff they had on display. They even had a giant Pikachu which I nearly flattened a kid trying to get to. There was a real Pikachu in the flesh there were also these really cool neon lights which sadly you couldn't buy which is really sad because i really wanted them and also i got to meet iono and after a short wait it was finally our time to go in and this was genuinely insane <laughs> Now I had heard this place was pretty massive, but until I was stood there, I didn't actually realize how insanely massive it was. The whole hall was broken up into different sections, each with a poster above them. One of the sections was like household items or like things to decorate with. This included things like pictures you could put up on your wall. They also had these really cool surfboards, which I was really tempted to get. They had a ton of different Pokeballs you could buy. I think each year they come out with more of them as well, which is really cool. And they also have different types of figurines as well. Then they had the Pokemon card section where honestly, I felt spoiled for choice. I thought it would just be the most recent Pokemon card set, but I was very wrong. They basically had a little bit of everything, so I found it very hard to pick what I wanted. They then had a ton of Pokemon plushies. Like plushies must have taken up at least a quarter of the floor space. And of course they ranged in style from the absolutely massive ones to the really small, cute sitting down plushies, which people seemed obsessed with. But as it's Pokemon, they had to be a little bit extra. And they also had this giant tube filled with plushies. Was it needed? Absolutely not. Could I stop looking at it? Also, no. So there we go. One thing I regret not buying are these Pokemon hats though. They're completely ridiculous, but I don't know why I didn't get one. <laughs> They also had on display all of their giant plushies as well. And I cannot stress enough just how big these are. And in case this isn't enough evidence for you to show just how big they are, 
This is one of them that my Twitch chat bought for me. These were absolutely massive and the funniest part was seeing loads of people walking out of the Pokemon store with them in their hands trying to carry them back with them. Now a lot of this stuff like the clothing and the plushies I expected to see, what I didn't expect and what I fell in love with was how many different pin badges they had. I used to be pretty obsessed with pin badges but I thought I was over that stage of my life until I saw all of these ones. Now a lot of this stuff you can buy on the Pokemon Center online but the real reason I wanted to go was actually for the exclusive items. These are items which you will only be able to buy at the Pokemon 2024 World Championships and after they're over all those items are gone forever. And seeing as I'm someone who wanted to get into collecting Nintendo stuff, I was really excited to check this stuff out. And it's safe to say I bought rather a lot at the Pokemon Center. So let's go through everything I got and then we'll go video game hunting for everything else. Now I already own far too many plushies, but I had to buy at least one if I was at the Pokemon Center. So I did pretty well and I only came home with him. Shinx is one of my favorite Pokemon, although I will say I prefer shiny Shinx. So I had to get him. Oh my God, he just moved in the background and scared me. Sir. But yeah, I had to get him. He's so cute and he's a little memento, but I did buy a lot of other stuff that wasn't plushies this time. Now, one thing I love from the Pokemon Center and always have is their clothing. You don't really think that the Pokemon Center should do good clothing, but I have a lot of my wardrobe from there. And now I even have this as well. And it's even got a little part on the side. This is one of the exclusive items. And this was the theme or like the branding of this year's World Championships. So of course I had to buy it. I also got myself a Team Rocket hoodie. Obsessed, I love it to pieces. Now I also got myself some Pokemon cards. Now if you don't follow me on Twitch, you might not know that I actually really love collecting Pokemon cards at the moment. I mean, trying my best to get as many full arts as I possibly can. And this was one of the ones that I bought while I was at the Pokemon Center, mainly because Alolan Vulpix is again, one of my favorite Pokemon. But from this set, I got a few good pulls. Like this was the card that came inside of it. I got this card. Oh my God, this one's beautiful. I'm obsessed. One of my favorite cards I've collected so far. Also got this shiny Arcanine. And then I was just obsessed with the type of hollow that this has. But yeah, we got one good pull from this, which I'm pretty happy with. I've messed the box up for this, but I also picked up this set as well, mainly because again, I'm obsessed with the cards that came with it. Now this is by no means exclusive, but honestly, I just love it to pieces. It's such a cool set. This is the set made from the winners from the 2023 World Championships. I love Mew. I had to buy the Mew version. I don't think it has any booster packs in it, which is why I haven't opened it yet. But again, I just think it's such a pretty display piece. Oh, and apparently this deck features a limited edition card back as well. So maybe I might want to open it to see what it looks like. Now, as you're going to find out in a second, one of the other things I'm obsessed with in life is pin badges. Some of the ones that you're gonna see now are the exclusive ones to the World Championships. So anything with this symbol on it were things you could buy on the day and aren't available anymore. So naturally being the wannabe collector I am, I bought as many as I could. Now, when I saw these on the website, I don't think I fully grasped the size of these. This is a pin badge and they had loads of them. It is absolutely beautiful. It's so detailed. And then I'm gonna have to find a way to put this on display in like a picture or something because it is so gorgeous but yeah this really caught my eye because it's huge and i don't think three backs is enough for this whole thing it weighs so much this is one of my favorite finds this is the pokemon pixel pins they did a bunch of them all of these have all the evolutions in one set of pin badges obviously i had to go for volpix because it's one of my favorites but i love the style they also did some event exclusive stickers which seem to have some really cute ones in it they also had a really pretty key ring although i'm not sure i'm gonna put this on my keys this seems massive to go on my set of keys. I mean, at least I wouldn't lose them. Oh my God, I just realized I own a fridge that I can put this on. This is a fridge magnet. I'm actually gonna go put it on my fridge right now. More pin badges of some of my favorite Pokemon. Look at them. And then finally, I had to pick up a lanyard. I might go and put some of the more exclusive pin badges on this lanyard as well. 
but again it's just exclusive for the event it's really pretty now although that's everything i bought from the pokemon store i didn't come all the way to london just to walk two hours around the pokemon center and be done so of course i decided to go around the whole of london and go video game hunting as well but seeing as we were in North London, the first thing we needed to do was to get into central London so we could start our hunt. And this meant we needed to cross the River Thames. And thankfully, the tube isn't the only way to get around London. So instead of going underground, we decided to go overground. And despite the little bit longer of a queue than we would have had at the tube, I think it's safe to say we had a much better view on the cable car. And although we found ourselves getting a little bit distracted by the viewers on the way, we soon found ourselves near Leicester Square. And this is where we could start our video game hunting. So if you've never been to the UK before, you might not know that there's really three main places to go to get all of your video game stuff. You have a place called Forbidden Planet, which doesn't really sell games, but does sell everything else you can think of to do with games, be it Funko Pops, figurines, board games, or manga, they have it all. Then you have a shop called CEX, which sells secondhand games and consoles and recently mobile phone stuff as well. And then you have Game, which is, you guessed it, a game store. <laughs> And soon you'll see that this is a shop barely hanging on. But this holds a lot of memories for me and my gaming history. But of course, this is London and you can also come across some absolutely incredible shops randomly as well. But first up on our trip was the Forbidden Planet London Megastore, which is just north of Leicester Square. Now, normally I can spend about 15 minutes or so looking around Forbidden Planet stores as they're normally pretty tiny and rarely have anything Nintendo related other than some Pokemon cards. But this time it was completely different because not only did they have a bunch of Pokemon cards that you could buy, they also had some things I've never seen before. And one of these things was actually Zelda manga. Now I didn't even know this existed, nor have I ever owned manga before, but as you can see, there was a deal on, so naturally I had to pick a few up. I wound up buying some of my favorite Zeldas, so I got Twilight Princess here. I've also got Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and A Link to the Past all together in one as well. And as you can see, these are so heckin' cool. I haven't read them yet. I need to start going through them because I moved house instead. But look how cool this is. I need to see if they've done any manga between the time they did Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom because I swear that there's some Link and Zelda romance that we need to know about and I would die for it. But I love the fact that the art styles are different in each of these as well. They also had a bunch of Funko Pops, although collecting them isn't really my thing. I don't really like the way they look on display. However, I was looking in the display at all the figurines and saw these things and knew what I needed them. And these are called Nendoroids, and this is the first time I have ever come across them, and I don't know how, they look so cute. Now, if you're like me and haven't heard of these, these are small chibi style figures that can fit in the palm of your hand. But what makes them really cool is the fact that they come with different parts, so you can switch out their poses and even facial expressions. But as you can see, this is really, really heckin' cute. And you can kind of see here that we have the Zelda version. And on this side, you can see that she has a couple of poses so she can hold a frog or she can look down at the Sheikah slate of frustration, which I absolutely love. But of course, being someone who has the extra gene, I couldn't stop at one because I saw the pair. And I also wound up picking up the Link version as well. Both of these are Breath of the Wild. And as you can see, Link comes with a Pona. I can pet a Pona and ride a Pona as well, which is really cute. And also has a bunch of accessories like the sword, shield, and also the axe. Now I was trying to tell if these guys were rare by looking them up. And I genuinely, at least in the UK, couldn't find anywhere that you can buy these two, the Nintendo ones, or actually all of them just seem to sell out so fast. So although these might not be rare, they are hard to get as of right now. But genuinely, these are probably the coolest finds that I've had from the whole weekend. I am so chuffed with these. Now I'm not someone who's been to Japan before, so when I saw these, I really wanted one just to see what they were like. These are one of those things where you don't know which one you're getting, but you can have any of these. I didn't really have a preference for these guys, actually. I didn't mind which one I got. So I opened him up and uh, he was missing everything. <laughs> I don't know how I got so unlucky, but like, 
There's nothing else in the box. I just got Kirby's body and that was it. I got hard done by. I only opened him when I got home though and had no idea that he was missing everything. <laughs> so yeah, spoiler alert. I got just, I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Next up were the CEX stores. Now, because these are secondhand stores, we decided to go in a couple just to see what we could get. And for the most part, these weren't very good. We didn't find much. One of the cool things you could do about CEX stores, though, is go see the pricing and find out if anything you own is actually worth a fair amount of money. This also made me very tempted to try and find where I put my Wii U in my parents' house because I did find a few places selling Wind Waker. This does seem to be just about the only Wii U game that's held its value or at least in CEX, and none of the Wii games seem to be worth that much. But one thing I will admit is I got very distracted by the sheer amount of weird games that I've never seen before, and I don't fully understand how they got physical releases. Like for example, I picked up this game called My Fantastic Ranch for £10. I spent about £9.90 too much for this game. Although that might be because it's very much aimed at kids and I'm very much not a kid. Although I will say this right here did have some voice acting in it, which took me by surprise. Considering that Endless Ocean just used a generic AI voice, maybe Nintendo can take some notes from some uh, £10 games. Or I think I had a look. It's like £25 online if you buy it new. But despite feeling a bit hard done by about this purchase, uh, it does not compare to how bad this game is. This, I managed to play a solid half an hour of, kind of got the vibe and was like, yeah, it's it's not for me. I didn't last five minutes in this. This was not a very good game at all. It has some of the worst controls. I didn't really understand what I was doing. It's a farming sim where you can't really put anything in your backpack because you don't have one. So you have to carry things one by one and, and put it in your storage, which is kind of wild. I didn't even make it to the zombie part. The farming part was just so painful. And it's currently selling for £17.90 on Amazon and has a rating of 3.7, which seems to be three stars too high. Genuinely one of the worst games I've ever played. At least I got it on sale though, I guess. Or more importantly, I did the public a service by buying this so no one else would be tempted. Our final stop was to try and give you guys an idea about what it is realistically like going to buy games in the UK right now. Now, game used to be the place to buy games. If I remember back to like the DS era, even 3DS era, there were multiple game stores in each city. There was one in almost every town. There was always so many people inside of them as well. And generally, people really wanted to work at game when they were at school. Like if you ask someone, oh, what would be your dream job? All the gamers would be like, oh, I really want to work at game. And I even remember going to some midnight releases of games as well. Like it was really, really hard hype but much like game stores in every other country times have unfortunately changed and as you could buy games digitally the game stores aren't doing so well so slowly bit by bit these dedicated game stores have been disappearing and now as a chance to try and stay somewhat alive they've become a part of sports direct because yes that's typically two things that go together so so well sports and gamers and as you can see, they don't even make the game part of the store easy to get to. They typically put it right at the back on a completely different floor. And I'm going to be real, I don't really buy that many games from game anymore. I genuinely just go to like Argos or to Sainsbury's and go buy them there instead because it's so much easier. But as you can see, they do have a sizable amount of part to get games. And honestly, game is the place to go to get special edition games if you're a collector. However, you want to look online and pre order them they don't really hold the stock in game stores anymore although i did get a little bit lucky so just because i didn't want to leave completely empty-handed i went up to the game employee and said hey would you be able to have a look in the back and see if you have any special editions and this is what they managed to get me now i have never heard of this game before whatsoever this says this is a story of a little rock helping a fallen star to find its way home. And I'm gonna have to give this a go so we can see what it's like. But the thing that really interested me was just how beautiful this box was. And also it being a game I've never heard of before, I thought it was pretty cool. And I love all the extra bits and pieces that came inside of this box as well. I also finally bought 
a Rune Factory game. I bought Rune Factory 3 Special Edition, which I think is pretty cool. I have already opened it because I, j I just want to know what was inside. I do want to play the game, so it's going to get opened anyway. But this really does have some cute little things inside of it. Uh, you have a poster. I couldn't care less for these. Why do I want something that's folded? But what's inside the poster is actually pretty cool. As this comes with two little badges, that you can stick on your clothing or bag or wherever you want to put them. I believe they're one of those ones that you just like take the back off and then you iron it on. But it came with two of those, which is pretty cool. And then also a notebook as well. I genuinely can't tell you the last time I've written anything with a pen. But the book looks cute and I think these will make fantastic display items other than a folded poster. Oh, stickers as well. Oh my God. There were stickers in it. But it's really cute. And honestly, I've always wanted to try a Room Factory game and thought this was probably the best time to give it a go. This is the only limited edition item I was able to pick up. And this is Cuphead. And this will be the only game that remains sealed out of all of these, just because I feel like this is a little bit extra. And finally, I managed to find this version of Tunic. Again, I'm really happy with this find because it looks beautiful and I can put it on display. I've also never played Tunic before, so I am really excited to play this. And I love all the extra bits and pieces that came with this game as well. Obviously, I wanted to play it, so I had to open it. But I have heard great things about this game, so I'm very excited to give it a go. Now, seeing as we were so close to Leicester Square, I thought it would be rude to not go to one of my favorite shops of all time, and this is Duck World. And you might be asking yourself how on earth Duck World could be related to this video, but as you can see as you get inside this shop, there are ducks of literally everything. Some of them are majestic, and some of them are just downright cursed, but that is why I love this store, and it's also why I seem to buy a duck whenever I come here. So, so far, my duck collection consists of this one that kind of resembles a toothless and also this Lord of the Rings duck. And I don't regret anything. Now, by this point in our adventure, we were getting pretty tired and we're ready to call it a day. That was until we came across this fantastic store. Now I'm gonna be real, I didn't know this store even existed. We spoke to the people inside the store and they said it had been open just a matter of months. So it doesn't surprise me, but this basically has everything Hello Kitty in it. Now I will admit, I only really know of the Sanrio characters through Animal Crossing. And honestly, I did fall in love with them because of that. But this shop was absolutely adorable. And I got a little bit obsessed with buying these figurines. Now I obviously went for the Sanrio characters and this is one of those boxes where you have a chance of getting any one of these. I really, really, really either wanted the secret one, obviously, or the one on the box because I mean, look at her. So I bought two of these because by this point I needed to just get home and didn't have enough room to carry anymore. So I wound up with this little guy who is adorable and holds a little teddy bear. Look at him, he's so cute. And thankfully, one thing about these boxes is the fact that these figurines are not the same weight. So I did manage to make sure that I picked up two different ones. And I wound up picking up this little guy as well. Look at him, isn't he cute? And he holds this matching teddy bear, which I think is absolutely adorable. So that's it for my first ever vlog. Let me know if you like this video, if you want to see more of them. Hopefully I can find more places to go and go video game hunting and just experience all the Nintendo things. And if you want to see me rank every single Nintendo Switch game I've played in 2024 so far, click this video here.